Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Barrett. I'm a winemaking specialist here with Anardis. And today we're gonna to be talking about microbial stability and control utilizing Anardis Stab Micro, Ketozan, and its specific application during wine maturation. Now just a few webinar formalities before we get started. The presentation should be approximately 40 minutes. And at the end of the presentation, we have a designated Q&A, which should be 15 to 20 minutes. Please leave, leave questions designated for the Q&A for the end of the presentation and avoid using the chat box. Whitney's here to help. And if you're bothered by the chat box, you can actually toggle it closed. And at this time with the new platform, we're recommending Chrome web browser. We've had some negative feedback with Microsoft Edge. So please keep that in mind. If you're having audio issues, you can also just call in directly. And there's details in the chat pa panel to do that. And this is a recorded session. And with more exciting news, uh, Zenith, um, an artist's revolutionary um, cold stabilization additive was approved by the TTB for the 24250. And we will be having a webinar this coming Friday, the 28th, that I hope you all tune into for more information about Zenith. So today we're going to be going over microbial control, um, the various enological applications of ketozan, its antimicrobial activity. We're gonna then start to talk about some of Anardis's range of ketosan, Anardis Stab Micro M and Anardis Stab Micro, the winemaking stage and application of Anardis Stab Micro. We'll be sharing some trial results. And then at the end of the presentation, having a Q and A. And I highly recommend everybody to take a look at some of these citations in this presentation if they wanna dive deeper into the subject of ketosan in enology. So wine microbial spoilage during maturation. Well, as you all know, there are several genre and species of microorganisms that can be found in must and wines at various times during vinification. So what we tend to see is a sequential development of these microorganisms based on their separate ecological niches. And grape health status is the main factor contributing to the diversity and occurrence of this varying wine microbiota. And so on the table or on the graph on the right hand side, you can see that uh, in the beginning stages of winemaking um, and harvest and must, there tends to be a large dominance of non Saccharomyces yeast, followed then by Saccharomyces being the dominant yeast in wine with the succession of malactic bacteria um, occurring after primary fermentation with the exception of co-inoculation strategies for, for malactic fermentation. Now, today we're focusing on maturation spoilage, which include the following spoilage organisms, uh, malactic bacteria, specifically we'll be looking at lactobacillus and pediococcus. And then we have some various spoilage yeast, Britannomyces bruxellensis, Zygosaccharomyces baileyi, and Saccharomyces lugwig. And then we also have aerobic organisms that can still really survive in relatively anaerobic environments. And this includes Acetobacter and Gluconobacter. So sulfur dioxide, it has been the antimicrobial and antioxidant of choice for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And recently winemakers are really starting to look at alternatives, not only due to the increased consumer health and allergen concern, but also due to the observation of uh, resistance in um, some spoilage organisms. So recent studies have really suggested a strong niche adaptation for Britannomyces bruxellensis strains according to human-related fermentation environments. So that's specifically using SO2. So the persistent use of, of SO2 has encouraged a select spoilage yeast resistance, and that's for Britannomyces, Saccharomyces lugwig, and also Zygosaccharomyces baileyi. And um, especially in Australia, where this work was done, they've seen an increased incidence of resistant strains of Britannomyces bruxellensis. So again, this is really bringing home that it is imperative that winemakers start to explore other, towards other types of microbial control tools. Another important um, state that many people um, forget about is that 
uh, various foliage organisms can enter into a viable non-cultural state. Now, what does this mean? This, this is really a physiological state of, of a microorganism where growth on conventional microbiological media is not observed, but the microorganism remains intact and viable. So um, other microorganisms beyond Britannomyces, which is listed, include Acetobacter, Candida stellata, Lactobacillus plantarum, Saccharomyces cerv cerevisiae, and Zygosaccharomyces bailei. But essentially, uh, metabolism is maintained in this uh, viable non-cultural state, and um, these organisms can still potentially produce and release various spoilage components like volatile phenols. So it's really important to keep that in mind um, when you're submitting any sort of analysis for plating, as this is not going to account for this specific state. So other microbial control tools. Um, so with the approved additives that we have available to us, we have lysozyme, which is a, is a control tool which causes lysis of the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria, specifically Enococcus lactobacillus and Pediococcus. Um, unfortunately, this is an allergen concern as it is derived from egg whites. And it can also contribute to protein instabilities in wine and subsequent higher addition rates of bentonite. Then we have sorbic acid, which is usually used in junction with SO2, especially for elaborating sweet wines. Sorbic acid uh, is effective in reducing some bacteria and yeast, but there is a high concentration of Zygosaccharomyces bailei and Britannomyces incidence being resistant to sorbic acid and SO2. And some bacteria strains can actually metabolize this acid and produce a geranium taint um, or off flavor. Next, we have fumaric acid, which is for controlling the growth of some species of lactobacillus and is also used as an alternative acidulant to tartaric acid. Unfortunately, some bacteria can still metabolize this acid. And this acid is also described as having a very harsh taste as well. Next, we have DMDC or dimethyl dicarbonate. Um, in the industry, it's quite commonly referred to as Velcrin and is um, more effective against yeast than bacteria and molds. But um, there has been uh, some incidence of um, resistance, especially with lactic acid bacteria and acetic acid bacteria. And this uh, specific additive is, is very toxic and requires specialized equipment and accreditation and is uh, just a nasty compound just to handle in general. And lastly, we have ketosan, which I'll, I'll be talking about later on in the presentation. And some of the technologies that we have available to us are hydrostatic pressure, ultrasonics, microwave technology, pasteurization, and pulsed light irradiation. Unfortunately, these technologies are pretty expensive and they require a specialized technicians, and some of them can alter the various organoleptic qualities of wine in a negative way. So um, what is ketosand? Um, well, um, ketosand is a hydrophilic biocompatible polymer, which is derived from deacetylated chitin. And if we look here um, on the right-hand side, we can see uh, cellulose here on the top. Um, well, chitin is actually the second most abundant compound to cellulose. And cellulose is typically found um, in plant cell walls and vegetable, vegetable fibers. And similar to cellulose, chitin is a, plays an integral part of the exoskeleton of various insects, crustaceans, diatoms, algae, and some fungi. And Ketosan itself is uh, basically, you can see the amine groups here, but it's it's a very similar um, compound to chitin, and I'll get into more detail about how it's uh, transformed in the next slides. But it's in analogy, it's sourced from the mycelium biomass of Aspergillus niger. You can see some pictures down here of Aspergillus. And um, it's really easily modified, um, allowing for many different types of functional derivatives across multiple industries, including food science, agriculture, and the medical industry. So ketosan's enological application. 
So it has been approved for use in wine by the TTB since 2013. And historically, uh, chitin, glucan, and ketosan derivatives were derived from crustacean sources with the variability and seasonality of these crustacean sources. Uh, fungal aspergillus derived ketosan has really um, been, the, been the preferred um, uh, source of ketosan as it creates a much more sustainable and homogeneous product um, compared to crustacean derived ketosan. And we'll be focusing mainly on the antimicrobial application in winemaking, but it's important to point out ketosan's various functions in fining, mycotoxin removal, heavy metal removal, and also its clarification effects. Um, and again, the mode of action of ketosan depends on its production and modification, as mentioned before, as there's many types of functional derivatives. So here we have some technical material on the properties of ketosan. And the important takeaway from this slide is really to focus on um, here the degree of uh, acetylation and the molecular weight, which determine its functional property and bioactive attributes. So lower molecular weight ketosan with a higher degree of deacetylation has increased antimicrobial properties. So, um, Again, um, it's also important to mention that at wine pH, ketosan has a very positive charge, which can react with various negatively charged wine components, such as proteins, metals, phenolics, and various wine microorganisms. This is an image from uh, Breslet et al., which was a great resource um, just on the enological application of ketosan um, and then across other types of industries. And again, this is really bringing home the antimicrobial activity of ketosan is really a function of the molecular weight of the ketosan, the medium pH, the degree of distillation, and any sort of modification that takes place uh, with the product. And as you can see here on the right hand side, here we have a standard ketosan and a Nardus stab micro ketosan. And our ketosan goes through a modification, which I'll talk about um, in the next coming slides, which gives it a much, uh, much more surface area and an increased antimicrobial activity. Another important factor is the time of contact. So ketosan really works uh, on contact with these microorganisms. So it's very important to make sure that it is in suspension um, when using the product. But again, I'll be going over this more when we talk about um, in artists' specific ketosan range that we have. Here we have some of the different molecular processes that may contribute to the antimicrobial activity of ketosan, um, with that being um, the interaction with negatively charged cell wall uh, or cell wall components, any sort of proteins that could be sticking out of the phospholipid bilayer, alterations to the membrane permeability and various energy pathways. Now there's physical finding and cell aggregation through physical removal. There's also possible diffusion of low molecular weight fractions through the cell wall and membrane. And again, there's also a negative, negatively charged nutrient secretion as well. So copper, for example, is a survival factor for some organisms and ketosan can help remove some of uh, this uh, survival factors. This coincides with the next slide here, which um, on the right, you can see the differences in the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Now, uh, ketosan can readily react with the various cell wall components of gram-positive bacteria compared to gram-negative bacteria because of the cell wall composition and various cell wall proteins that you can see here. Now, that, with that being said, ketosan still is effective in reducing the microbial loads of gram-negative bacteria, but typically at a higher dosage rate. So you can see here um, to really bring it down, its population down, that we had to apply about 20 grams per hectoliter. Now, with that being said, luckily the main spoilage organisms that are gram negative are aerobic. So proper topping and oxygen management and just general cellar hygiene can really mitigate the spoilage from these organisms. So um, now um, 
we're going to really be talking again about uh, our Ketozan range versus other types of Ketozan based products. And as mentioned in previous slides, Ketozan itself is a really versatile biological polymer that can be modified according to its intended application. And an artist stab micro has been specifically modified to increase antimicrobial efficiency. So uh, compared to other available enological ketosans, Inartistab Micro is the only, only enological ketosan with a pre-acid activation step, um, which uh, this really increases the re reactivity and polymer surface area, increases the charge, increases the solubility, and really all of this lends to superior antimicrobial activity. With that, I wanted to share some snapshots from the technical data sheets of the two different ketosans that we carry, an artist stab micro and an artist stab micro M. Now, if it helps, the M stab micro stands for must. So this is a great tool for modulating and controlling must ecology, especially when dealing with compromised fruit. The stab micro M is easily suspended during fermentation and is readily separated during grossly racking. So you can leave this product um, in in suspension during fermentation without any sort of adverse effect on Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And this is a preparation of ketosan and purified yeast holes. And um, let's say for some people who are practicing cold maceration, Stab Micro M can really help mitigate the bloom of unwanted spoilage organisms. And it could also be applied to grapes that are being transported long distances. It's really also useful for producers who have had ongoing problems with ferocious malolactic bacteria, which could have led to stuck or sluggish fermentation. And compared to other microbial tools like lysozyme, stab micro M is vegan and allergen free and is a great product for those producers looking to elaborate low SO2 wines. Now the maximum legal dosage of stab micro M in the US is 20 grams per hectoliter. Here we have the Inartis stab micro technical data sheet. So this is a preparation of pre-activated ketosan and, and, and some organic acids. And this is really for preventing and reducing unwanted microorganisms. Um, so it can be used prophylactically and curatively at various stages during vin vinification. It, it displays similar properties to stab micro M, but with increased antimicrobial activity due to the pre-activation step. And it has a valuable application in unfiltered wines and low SO2 wines. Um, for those who are practicing fluid. Stab micro really helps create compact fleas and can also help reduce microbial loads. And we've also seen a reduction in spoilage related off flavors and aroma with stab micro finding. And below we have the preventative and curative dosage ranges with the max legal dosage in the United States being 15 grams per hectoliter. So here we have the same graph from earlier showing the microbial ecology during vinification. And this is important to keep in mind considering the intended application of stab micro M or stab micro. And um, one example would be, let's say that there is a producer who may be practicing cold maceration and has seen sluggish alcoholic fermentation with the finished wine having some mousy off flavors. Well, um, this producer might want to explore applying Stab Micro M at harvest or crush to control opportunistic ferocious malactic bacteria that may be present during the beginning stages of fermentation and causing this sluggish alcoholic and uh, mousy really uh, associated off flavors. Now here, the table on the right shows the various winemaking stages one can apply Stab Micro M um, with an artist Stab Micro M as in must being applied at harvest for flotation and settling and remain in suspension during fermentation. And it can also be applied to prevent malactic fermentation. And an artist Stab Micro can, can be used for flotation to prevent malactic fermentation in maturation um, during barrel aging and just prior to bottling. Now, um, before I get into sharing some of our internal trial results, I really wanted to talk through the differences between commercial trials versus lab scale trials. So in the lab, we have a considerable amount of control compared to a commercial setting where we can remove various parameters to better identify the efficiency of, in this case, stat micro. Um, 
So for example, um, we compared to a commercial setting, the, the wines used in this trial had no SO2 and were sterile filtered to remove uh, any variables that could skew our results. And we have some ongoing winery scale applications of Anarda Stab Micro during maturation, mimicking the setup of the lab scale trials. And we will hopefully share more data with you um, uh, with those trials in the future. And now this, this trial was designed to examine the efficiency of Stab Micro in, suppress, in suppressing uh, spoilage organisms over a two month period, utilizing resuspension strategies and ex extended contact of the product. So this was really uh, inspired by multiple studies examining the impact of ketosine on Britannomyces and maturation spoilage organisms during barrel aging. And uh, you can see here pictured is a smaller vessel. And so this was the scale of uh, what we uh, performed in the lab. So um, again, as there's been multiple studies examining ketosan's effect on Britannomyces during maturation in barrel, we chose to focus on preventing malolactic bacteria spoilage during maturation in barrel. So um, with that, we used a non-sulfur Chardonnay that was painstakingly sterile filtered and inoculated with acclimatized malolactic bacteria from the Vincreed Lab culture collection. These cultures included Lactobacillus plantarum, Enococcus eni and Pediococcus parvalis. To the table on the right, you can see the wine chemistry of the 2019 Chardonnay and highlighted in red is the sulfur dioxide and malic, lactic and acetic acid, which were initials for this experiment. And again, if, you're look, if you want to look into more detail about the previous studies examining the effect on ketosan, on um, the effect of, on Britannomyces and ketosan and red wine during maturation, I highly recommend, recommend taking a look at the citations and reading some of the, these publications. So um, for the treatment and moder monitoring, um, treatments and controls were both stirred on a magnetic stir plate at 400 RPM for 30 seconds once every two weeks and sampled with an artist stab micro in suspension. Um, we uh, had bi-weekly, so every two weeks, we had metabolite tracking analysis performed by Venkri Labs, and that was looking at lactic, acetic, and malic acid. And after the two months, we performed plating and viability, CIE lab, oxidative stability, organic acids, and protein stability. And now the control uh, triplicates had no treatment with stab micro and the treatment with an artist stab micro had a dosage of eight grams per hectoliter. So in this table below, we can see the real time PCR analysis for the lactobacillus, enococcus and pediococcus. So these samples were submitted to Vincri Labs 12 hours after inoculation. And um, the plating results showed mixed malactic bacteria colonies, too numerous to count across all modalities. So we know that we had a viable population of spoilage uh, malactic bacteria present in the beginning of the experiment. And now um, we are going to be getting into some of the metabolite data that was tracked over the two month maturation period. Now, malic acid is a primary acid consumed by malactic acid bacteria. And what we can see here is that after three weeks, the control samples were malic dry, while the anartostab micro treatments maintained malic acid. So we had a preserved acidity. Next, we have the lactic acid metabolite data. And lactic acid is produced as a result of the bioenzymatic transformation of L-malic acid to L-lactic acid. And here we can see the lactic acid significantly increased with the untreated control compared to the anartostab micro treatment, showing that there was no signs of malactic fermentation in the anartostab micro treatment. And lastly, from the metabolite data, we have acetic acid production over the trial duration. And acetic acid is produced in large quantities by spoilage malactic acid bacteria. 
And we can see here the treatment with the Nardistab micro at eight grams per hectoliter significantly reduced the increase of acetic acid for the treatment um, without, or the control without stab micro, uh, acetic acid concentration nearly doubled. So after the two months, we took our final sampling and submitted the samples for microbial plating. Um, the control modality had viable populations of Enococcus eni greater than three uh, times 10 to the fourth, while Leonardo stab micro treatment showed no detectable colonies. So this really shows that there was a significant effect on malactic, malactic bacteria viability um, comparing Leonardo stab micro treatments versus the controls. So uh, some additional observations and benefits. So with the final sampling, we submitted the wines for heat stability testing to see the effect a uh, stab micro had on wine protein stability. Compared to the control, the stab micro treatment wines were significantly more stable than the controls. And this really corresponds to lower bentonite addi additions, which help to preserve the organoleptic characteristics of white wines. And it's really in line as well with uh, sustainable winemaking practices. So here we have the oxidative stability and CIE lab results. So we submitted the wines for oxidative stability and CIE lab results just to examine the effects that micro had on the susceptibility of browning and white wines. And, deter and to determine the oxidative stability of the samples were incubated at 50 degrees Celsius and an absorbance of uh, 420 nanometers was read over a four day period. Um, and if we were to see an increase of uh, 0.15 units, that would uh, put the wine in the category of being oxidatively unstable. And what we can see here um, is that um, the control samples were all considered to be unstable compared to the stab micro treatments that were stable after the incubation period. So um, comparing the CIE lab results, we can see from the Delta E, which stands for the range of perception, um, which is typically from one to 100, but with um, our results, all the samples uh, lie within the two to 10 range, which means it's a uh, perceptible at a glance. Um, which we can all, I think, clearly see if we take a look at the picture of Blev, where the left is the control and the right is the treatment with stab micro. And both of these wines did not have SO2 and there was some significant headspace after the sampling period, hence the browning. But we can really visually see that the stab micro likely reacted with catechin and various browning pigments in the Chardonnay and really helped reduce the oxidative browning um, compared to the control treatment. Now, here is a slide just with some of the other industrial applications of ketosan. And again, this polymer is very easily modified and you can create so many different types of functional derivatives. So it's being used um, in the medical industry, um, in wine, in food science, in wastewater treatments. Um, I read some very interesting papers on its application in vineyards to help mitigate powdery mildew infection and to also increase uh, quality phenolics. Uh, it's it's truly an amazing polymer, and I have enjoyed diving deeper into the subject of ketosan and just what can't ketosan do. <laughs> and so uh, here we have some of the blends of ketosan and some different products that we have. Um, so those products include Clairol QY, which is for phenolic and off-flavor refining, and we have uh, the Clairol ZR and ZW which is a vegan finding agent from plant protein, and it has a portion of ketosan and bentonite. And both of these products are for pre preparing white and red wine for the treatment of Zenith, uh, Zenith Uno and Zenith Color. We also have Clairol HM, which is a PVI PVP polymer with preactivated ketosan. And this is specif specifically for removing heavy metals to prevent um, browning and oxidation. And we're going to be talking a lot more in detail about these products in a finding and clarification webinar this summer. And uh, we're also excited to uh, offer now the self-BRET diagnosis kit, which is a 
compact diagnosis kit that allows winemakers to analyze for Britannomyces independently of a laboratory or more expensive analytical techniques. And now this is anecdotal, but it's still a very affordable diagnostic tool without the requirement of specialized equipment. So um, if you're interested in that, please feel um, free to reach out to, uh, to me for some more information. There's also an artist and a Nardis 2020 handbook download for those of you who don't have our updated handbook as of yet. And with that, we can get into the 15 minute Q&A. And um, here we have the citations listed as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we look forward to see you, seeing you in the next webinar.